Hi everyone, how are you today? I'm doing great. This was actually not the video I was going to post. The one I was going to post It's taken me forever to edit because there's a lot of clips that I've got to put together. Um, and I am not an editor. <laughs> I'm not good at editing. So it's, um, it's been a trip. But while I'm trying to put that one together, I thought I'd post this. It's my D&D &D story time. I thought this would be fun because, ooh, do I have a lot of fun stories slash me being real, real dumb during D&D. &D. So I thought I'd talk about all of the stupid things I've done during D&D. &D. I have just today thought of four different stories of where I was just like, wow, Bridget, you could have been a little bit, just a little bit smarter. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is actually one of my favorite characters I ever created, but it might be like the high I've always been chasing type thing, even though I love all of my characters. This one particularly, she was like my first character, so like my baby. Um, her name was Sabina. Um, and just a heads up for any other story times, this is the only time I'll be talking about this particular Sabina. I have renamed the character and rebuilt her in other campaigns in an attempt to like play her through. And once I start telling the story, you'll understand why. So she was a sorcerer. And the first campaign I ever did was Pathfinder. Um, I found I had a love for Pathfinder because it was the first campaign and I really like the numbers and all that fun jazz going on in Pathfinder. But so particularly, particularly, I really liked how Pathfinder did their sorcerers. I thought their sorcerers were done really well. Um, and I particularly like sorcerers just because I really hate having to like prepare spells. I'm not a big fan of that. I usually avoid any class where I have to prepare spells every day. In fact, instead I just like, like to pick like a set of spells and these are all I can use. But, you know, because it, it just saves me time. But the Sorcerers in Pathfinder, I thought, were really well built. I really liked their builds. And so Sabina was a Sorcerer in Pathfinder. I loved her. She was great. I built her really well, and I was super excited. She had, like, insanely high charisma. I just rolled really well, because that was how we built these characters, was rolls. So it was, like, you know, roll 6, um, d6, drop the lowest, um, and do that six times twice and pick the better set and I just happened for one of my sets to get really good rolls but so we're doing this and she's just great I love her but her whole thing is she is a rich elf like she came from a wealthy family with a wealthy background like her dad is like the head merchant uh head of trade in the elven city and like the big elven city um, so she's a high elf noble. Dad's super rich. She's super rich. Um, she's also super spoiled, super selfish. A um, hundred percent like thinks she's better than literally everybody else. Unless you've got money, then you might be on the same level as her. Um, and she's traveling with, I believe it was a dragon hen. It's been like five years since this campaign so like some of the details are fuzzy I just remember her really well and this story really well because it was it was painful it was so painful but anyway so she's traveling with this dragon kid who saved her life at one point or no who she saved his life at one point like just on accident it wasn't even on purpose she just accidentally saved his life but now he has he thinks he has a life death to her so, you know, fun, fun, fun. What could, what could go wrong? So, they get to the main city, and this was a pre-built campaign. I can't for the life of me remember which one it was, but it was a pre-built campaign. Um, with a little bit of tweaking, because, you know, when you let your players get a little crazy with their backstories. And we had all of our backstories interconnecting over... A vampire overlord that our DM had a write-up. I felt really bad for him. It kind of, it spiraled. It was like, 
one person and then two people and the next thing you know every single person in the campaign's got it but anyway so <laughs> Sabina is just a piece of shit human she likes her friends and she'll like protect her friends but everybody else can just fuck off except for she's a slut she uh will happily um charm her way out of a situation in the most charming way possible so like sleeping with the guy just it was who she was this was like sophomore year of college so I mean I'll just let you kind of like I'd been I was living vicariously through my character because I was not someone that slept around but character could so it was fine it was fine um so we go into this dungeon uh and we're walking into the dungeon the first thing is, we walk into the dungeon, we meet a guard, and we're, we're supposed to fight the guard. Like, I'm pretty sure that's how the campaign had it written, is like, you're going into this dungeon, and you're like, yeah, I think it was a dungeon. It was either like a dungeon or like an underground basement, because we were about to go fight a mini boss. So we're walking into this underground basement, there's a guard, and I talk my way out of sleeping with this guy. I mean, I'm sorry, talked my way out of fighting this guy. By sleeping with him. Or not, actually, we did, I did not sleep with him. I, uh, what did I do? Oh, I just dreamed my way out by insinuating that that possibility is somewhere not in this present, but possibly this future. So we know not in this dungeon, and we're in this lovely dungeon. And the DM goes, right in front of you, there's a hallway, there's pillars on either side, blah, 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 yada, yada. And in the middle of this dungeon, there is a specific spot that has a T marked on it. It looks different than every other spot in this room. It's got a T. There's something weird about this one spot. Like, just be aware. This spot, it's got a T marked on it. It seems off. Y'all notice it seems off. You all, you all see it. No matter what your perception check is, y'all see it. I go, hmm, seems normal, and walk right on it, and fall into a trap. He rolls some dice, a good number of die, and gets max damage. Literally one shots me right in half, and that is the end of Sabina. And this is like. Level three? Like, we're, we're level three, I want to say, at this point. So, this, this character who I loved, I one-shot to death. Because I didn't pay attention to when the DM said, Hey, hey, there's some dot, or there's a trap here. And literally, without saying, there's a trap in the middle of the floor, he told us exactly where this trap is, and that it was a trap. Without literally telling us it was a trap. And I'm over here being like, I have no idea what's going on. La di da di da di, let me walk into this trap. Um, and based on that one piece of information, you can now know what my life in D&D is. Um, and I have spent the rest of my career in D&D, not the rest of it, but I have several times in several other campaigns attempted to rebuild this character. Though I've never done a sorcerer since in Pathfinder. That was the only campaign I actually played in Pathfinder, which is really disappointing because I really did like the um, the Pathfinder system. I know it's a little bit more massy than like 5e, and so like a lot of people don't like it. But I liked like all of the skill checks because I liked the variety of skill checks, and I liked the um, ability to kind of just point put points where like you get set number of points and you can put them wherever every level and so you can have like a plus 25 easily to uh you know a religions check or an arcana check and like you're a wizard and you have like a super high arcana and it, i i really liked that because like it feels like i don't know in 5e i don't I miss skill checks the way they used to be in, are in Pathfinder because <sighs> so like my sorcerer in one of my Pathfinder campaigns has only got like a plus six 
or I don't even think it, it's like a plus five at like level 10 to Arcana. And I'm a notorious bad roller. You'll see that in future stories. Terrible roller. Um, and so having low Arcana jet or pluses to my Arcana, despite being a high level, because that's just, it's how it works, is it's hard. And I don't know. But that's like this weird thing. But I miss Pathfinder, and I miss that character, and I had two other characters afterwards. And neither of them met up to her, her high standards. But the second one was a uh, cleric. And I am not a support character. I want to go in and fuck some shit up. I want to burn down some buildings. I want to have a good time. So I didn't like her anyway. My second character was a ranger. And I didn't really get to, like... Or the, the character after the cleric was a ranger. And I didn't really get to use her much. Because she was supposed to be Sabina's cousin coming to collect the body. But the group kind of imploded at that point. So, like, I think I got to use her for um, maybe three weeks or three sessions. And then the group ended because of, like, just some stuff. Ah, some stuff related to the campaign itself. And then some stuff going on outside the campaign that made it really difficult for us to meet up. So, like, I never really got to use her. But then I've, I've been interested in going back to playing Ranger, but I haven't played one since. So I don't know how much I would have liked that Ranger. But, like, none of them were Sabina. But also none of them were assholes like Sabina. And I really just liked being as pompous as fucking possible for no reason other than just because I could. Um, but, yeah, I just... That was my first time. Or my first major fuck-up in D&D. But I will say, because I don't really... I'm probably not going to touch back on this Sabina again. Because it was such a short campaign and so long ago. I do want to tell you the funniest good story that happened with it. So in this town, the first thing we do is as we, how we meet as a party is we destroy some goblins. And just like the town's being attacked by goblins and we just go in and we fuck some shit up. You know, as, as D&D players are wont to do. Um, so we go in and we go murder some goblins, and then we find the richest man in town who is very thankful to us, and I'm flirting with him, and DM told me later, you, if you wanted to sleep with him, you were going to sleep with him, but Sabina, he was rich, and she's a whore, so it was a great combination, so she charismas hooray into his room, and then... <laughs> <laughs> because we were a bunch of little shits. We were like, so what happens in the bedroom? And he's like, well, roll a performance check. And these are the things I roll 20s on, by the way. Just these things. These unimportant, unstory-driven things that just don't matter. So I roll a nat 20 on my performance check. And he's like, yeah, the both of you had the greatest time in the bedroom in your lives. And I was like, ha! Ha! We are great. I am great. But... That's my story time. That is my first character. Um, and how the rest of my life in D&D was built. Um, and a lot of the stupid shit I do is 100% thanks to D&D podcasts that I was introduced to before the game, which made role-playing the goal of every campaign that I had. And just being like, how dumb of a role-player can I be? Well, not dumb. Interesting. How interesting of a role-player can I be? So, all right. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about. I just, I needed to tell, I want to tell all of my D&D stories. I was thinking about it yesterday and I just like, I did more stupid shit in my D&D campaign yesterday. And I was like, I have to talk about all of these stupid things. People have to know how dumb my characters are and how unlucky I am. All right. Well, that's all. Um, if you want to hear more stories, like and subscribe. Um, uh, follow me on Twitch. My link is down below in the description. Um, and I hope you have a great after evening, day, whatever point in the day it is. I hope you have a great rest of your day and rest of forever. Bye.